Hello everyone and welcome to the most requested game from cha uh, yesterday's Champions Chester Finals. It is round 5 game between Wesley So and Magnus Carlsen. Uh, this is the third game of round 5. Two, first two rapid games ended in a draw and this is now the Armageddon game. So Magnus needs a draw uh, in order to win. Wesley needs to win in order to win Armageddon. I'm also going to show another game in this video uh, but let's focus on this one first. And regarding clock times, uh, yes, I've uh, heard your comments and I will uh, stop using them for the moment as uh, you guys said that you like them but you don't like them uh, changing colors all the time so you know it this is this distracting from the actual game so until i fix that i'm not going to uh, visually use the times uh, on the clock uh, but you know hopefully i will uh, be able to do it uh, fairly soon and uh, yeah it wasn't really an issue for this game or the other one that i'm going to show uh, so you know don't, don't worry about the clocks in this one let's just enjoy the chess so wesley opened with pawn to e4 and magnus goes for pawn to c5 which is very solid for for an armageddon game that you only need a draw in knight to c3 we have knight to c6 and now knight to f3 we have pawn to e5 and now bishop to c4 and already after g6 we have a completely new game that's um, uh, a very very interesting as uh, you know move four in the sicilian defense getting a completely new game not something you see every day so okay pawn to d3 we have h6 and now wesley goes for pawn to h3 we have pawn to d6 and now knight to h2 already saying that he wants the castle and execute pawn to f4 uh, bishop to g7 by magnus we have castles knight to f6 and now pawn to f4 striking in the center e captures bishop captures and now castles by magnus we have queen to d2 now preparing to capture on h Six. so magnus just defends it with king to h7 we have knight back to f3 as the knight no longer has a purpose on h2 and now bishop to e6 countering the strong light square bishop here and now uh, there are a couple of moves you could consider like moving the bishop back or capturing on e6 but wesley does nothing of the sort he plays knight to g5 check sacrifices the knight and starts an attack against the black king and it's a very weird sacrifice because it's unclear what your plan is after magnus accepts the sacrifice and accepting uh, is definitely the strongest move so that's what magnus does we have bishop captures now okay the knight is pinned but it is defended twice uh, so knight to e5 getting another defender in also putting pressure on the bishop and just queen to f2 and now wesley's idea becomes apparent he wants to play queen h4 check and put even more pressure on that knight on f6 so magnus goes knight e to d7 he adds another defender and now pawn to e5 wesley gives up a little bit more material to clear the e4 square for his knight and put even more pressure on that f6 knight so okay d captures on e5 we have knight to e4 and now the question is how to defend this it's a really Really nasty position and um, uh, there are many ways to go wrong and there's pretty much only one way to go right the idea that Magnus has to find here is Bishop to f5 and King to g8 those are the two moves that have to be uh, included in this defense and to give you an idea uh, once uh, let's say King g8 because it was not played in the game now okay Queen to h4 you put more pressure here now bishop to f5 disconnects the rook's attack towards the knight on f6 and now after let's say knight g3 you go after the f5 uh, bishop now queen to b6 and now uh, black can defend and will be even better if rook captures on f5 g captures and knight captures there's a very nice defensive maneuver knight to h7 goes after the bishop and once the bishop moves now you play bishop f6 go after the queen and once the queen moves king to h8 and now you've defended if knight to uh, h6 going after the f7 pawn you don't care rook a to d8 you give up the uh, rook here captures captures and captures and now queen b4 you offer a queen trade and you are perfectly fine you will uh, break the position with e4 and your position is uh, excellent here however this is uh you know easy to spot but the move order matters because magnus wanted to play it but he started with queen to b6 and now after queen to b6 it's a completely different variation because now after queen to h4 which comes with check king to g8 uh, you can know uh, or rather yeah uh, you can no longer play king to g8 it'd be great if you could now play king to g8 and bishop to f5 but uh, what happens now is that wesley will just play rook captures on f6 and you're not in time knight captures knight captures with check you have to capture and you get checkmated on h8 so now after this idea of queen to h4 check magnus cannot afford king g8 he has to play knight to h5 and now pawn to g4 again uh not uh, devastating for for 
uh, black, but uh, you, you have to find the precise move, and Magnus doesn't. The only way to defend this is pawn to f5. To show you, uh, f5 will be met with g captures on h5, and now you play f captures on e4. And after h captures on g6 check, you have to go to g6 with the king, and you are very safe here. If king to h2, trying to play rook to g1, now you just play knight to f6, and you take care of everything. Uh, because, uh, okay, the f6 square is nicely defended three times by the bishop, rook, and the king. And if you go rook to g1, then the king escapes via f7 with the knight nicely uh, guarding everything. Uh, but Magnus missed it. He played bishop captures on c4 first, probably with the idea that once Wesley recaptures, he will then play pawn to f5. Maybe he just wanted to get rid of one more attacker from the board. But Wesley now does not capture back. He just plays g captures on h5, and now the position is uh, is lost. Uh, Magnus played bishop to d5, even though, okay, if, if you try f5 now, yeah, you can play it, but it's not going to be easy. Knight to g3, and after bishop to d5, now you're just going to play h captures on g6, for example. And there's nothing here. Yeah, king king goes to g. If you go capture here, then this is checkmate. If you go to g8, then this is checkmate. So uh, not great. Magnus played bishop to d5 first. He wanted to save the bishop, but now Wesley goes for knight to f6 with check. Very nasty stuff here. Knight captures on f6, and now of course rook captures on f6. It comes with an attack on the black queen, and now if you play bishop captures on f6, the problem is h captures on g6 check, king captures and queen to h6 check, of course king goes to f5, rook to f1 with check, king e6, and now rook captures on f6 will pick up the queen on b6. So that one, that's uh, one of the reasons why king to g8 in that line was crucial not to allow all of these tactics. So queen captures on f6 was played, Magnus gives up the queen right away bishop captures we have uh, pawn to g5 now and queen captures on g5 bishop captures queen ca sorry not queen captures first wesley delivered a check king to g7 and now pawn to h6 with check playing precise moves we have captures captures king to h7 queen to f5 check king h6 a repetition here once king h7 and now king to f2 preparing to bring the rook into the game rook to g8 and now of course queen h4 check king to g6 uh, sorry king to g6 and rook to g1 with check king to f5 and now uh queen to h7 with check so if you don't want to lose the uh, rook on g8 you have to block with the rook so rook to g6 and only now wesley traded rook captures pawn captures and now queen to d7 with check so magnus does have some compensation for the queen uh, in the likes of the rook and the the bishop here but the black king being on f5 it's very very hard to escape all of the checks bishop to e6 but now queen captures on b7 wesley starts collecting material you want to get rid of all the pawns and then you will just start pushing your own pawns that's the easiest way to win uh rook to h8 was played and now king to g3 but we all know how resilient magnus is so he will of course fight this with g5 queen to g7 now uh, attacking the rook and the rook to h4 we have pawn to b3 and now pawn to a5 magnus will try to create some sort of a fortress but it is very difficult because you know you cannot defend uh, th those queenside pawns so pawn to a4 uh, pawn to e4 now trying to get some action against the white king d captures Sorry, that's not a D captures, D captures, king captures, and now queen to g6 check. Again, you have to block with the bishop, queen to c6 check, and now more pawns will fall. King to d4, uh, d4 defending the c5 pawn, but now even c3 with check. And it's not that Wesley wants to trade pawns here, he actually wants captures and queen to f6 check to pick up the bishop on f5. So king to e5, that's why Magnus goes back. Uh, queen captures on c5 check, king to f6, and queen to b6 with check. Bishop to e6, and now just king to g2, not allowing any uh, checks, uh, any captures to come with check. Uh, and now just rook to e4. Of course, if uh, you go for a capture here, then just queen captures on e6, and it's a completely winning endgame for Wesley. King f5, just b4, and that's it. Of course, the, the, the pawns just start marching forward. So Magnus played rook to e4, but it doesn't matter. Pawn to b4. We have captures, captures, rook to e2, check. King g3, rook to a2, and now queen to d4 with check. King to f5, uh, and now queen to d3 with check. Trying to connect with the uh, with something, but uh, um, you know more more uh, more than anything, just uh, guarding against any unnecessary checks that might be delivered to the white king. So king to e5, now pawn to a5. Wesley just starts pushing, and that's pretty much it. Bishop to d5, trying to get some sort of a uh, checkmate here, but of course queen to e3 with check. King to f5, queen to d3, check. King e5, and now king to g4. Uh, rook to g2 with check, king to h5, now bishop to e4, and queen to c3 with check. 
king f4, now pawn to a6. Uh, and here Magnus did play rook to c2, but it was also in this position on move 59 that he resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. He had like 40 seconds on the clock. I think Wesley had like two and a half minutes, so it's not really uh, an issue of time. But uh, once the queen moves, like queen f6 check, the pawns just start marching forward. Uh, then this pawn defends it, and I mean, it's, it's too easy to win this. Of course, Magnus will not suffer through this. Uh, so beautiful game by Wesley, and by drawing two first two rapid games and winning Armageddon, Wesley wins the match. And uh, not just by drawing an Armageddon, by actually winning uh, a game against Magnus. So very nicely done by Wesley. And uh, yeah, you've seen that uh, position very, very early on in the game, uh, how uh, he went for this... Um, uh, all the tricky moves, you know, push G4 and uh, just started capturing everything, set up this uh, beautiful knight sacrifice on G5. Even though it's not a move you will see, uh, even if Wesley studied this position, it's not a move that the engine recommends. It's not like in the first five suggestions. So knight to G5, uh, it's possible to defend, but, you know, you have to play precise. And it's always easier to attack than to defend, and this one uh, goes to Wesley. Now, that being said, let's check out another game. This one is from round six. Uh, the one also you guys requested features Magnus versus Maxim Vashiela Grav. Uh, and it's also a, a pretty wild one. Let me just check the uh, letter on the little robot so you guys don't think this is uh, an Armageddon game as well. Uh, so just give me a few seconds. There we go. All right, so... This is a rapid game, and Magnus in this one had the white pieces, and he opened with knight to f3. So let's see what Maxim goes for. We have pawn to d5, c4, uh, the uh, the Reti gambit, and now pawn to e6. Again, transposing into the Agincourt defense, g3, knight to f6, bishop to g2, and bishop to e7. Both players castled, and here uh, we have pawn to b3. Magnus signaling that he will now finketo his other bishop as well. d4, we have pawn to e3, and now knight to c6. Again, d3 looks like a really awesome move because it sort of cripples white's uh, uh, center of the board but uh, after knight to e5 it's very very hard to find moves for black here to give you an example let's say we want to get rid of this knight just f4 will be played and you can even uh, double white's pawns here let's say knight goes here uh, immediately bishop to a3 you kick away the rook and once the rook moves uh, you have immense problems here the f7 pawn is hanging and there's no good way to defend it because the bishop controls all of the dark squares here and if you play g6 again there's no good move here let's say you play c5 you cut off the bishop rook captures an f7 and you, you you just uh lose the game let's say knight to c3 will come here and then rook to f1 will deliver checkmate to the black king so it's a uh, you know uh, don't try something like d3 here so knight to c6 by maxim and now e captures on d4 knight captures and now just bishop to b2 magnus finketos the other bishop as well and there are a couple of games where knight captures on f3 was played but here we have bishop to c5 and it is now already as of move nine that we have a completely new game uh, so Magnus develops knight c3, we have rook e8, and now knight to e5, getting sort of a, a Catalan setup here. Uh, we have bishop to d6, and now pawn to f4. So with the f-file now, uh, f-pawn pushed and this diagonal opening up, uh, Maxim brings the bishop back, now threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries. King to h1, and now queen to e7. Now Maxim has to figure out how to get his bishop into the game, make Magnus's bishop not that useful, and get the rook into the game. If he can solve that, he will be fine. Uh, if not, then Magnus will just uh, straight up win the game, and Magnus goes for pawn to g4. And it's always very impressive when you're able to uh, push pawns on the uh, same side that you've castled, uh, just to rattle your opponent's king also castled on the, the, that same side. So we have rook to d8, pawn to g5, knight to d7, and now knight to e4. Just putting the knight in front of your opponent's king, it's always uh, you know a good recipe for victory. Knight to f8, Magnus wants to uh, attack the black king, but uh, Maxim wants to create some sort of a defensive perimeter here uh, with the knight helping out with the control uh, of the 6th rank and also the h7 pawn. Uh, queen to h5 now, uh, and knight to g6. And look at this now, knight to g4, you know that something will land <laughs> on either f6 or h6 and bishop to a3. Now Maxime wants to trade the bishops here, but now knight g to f6 with check. And what do you play here? You of course have to capture, 
uh, not, um, just moving uh, ends in, uh, up with queen captures an h7 and then you get destroyed so you have to accept the sacrifice but now comes g captures an f6 and now uh, with the dark squares opened up you have to worry about this checkmate and you also have to worry about knight g5 followed by queen captures an h7 so how do you play this now the real problem is uh, if queen to f8 okay you stop uh, the idea of queen h6 then comes bishop captures an a3 you you just uh, bring the queen back and then ig5 and that that's pretty much it and it's interesting that in the game uh maxim tried a different approach he played queen to b8 which can be met with the exact same move bishop captures on a3 but magnus goes for knight to g5 first and now after king to f8 because there's really no good way to defend just queen captures on h7 uh, rook to d7 was played and now bishop captures on d4 and it was in this position on move 23 that Maxim Vashil Lagrav resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done and uh, as the other game ended in a draw Magnus takes the win in the rapid section so now you're down a full piece you cannot capture you get checkmated on f7 and uh, without that you really have no useful move here like any move you make here uh, is pretty much completely useless there's no way to get the bishop the rook into the game is just a uh, it's just a failed plan uh, right from the beginning and it's it's a very unclear where uh, Maxim got uh, uh, has gone uh, this wrong because up until this point knight to c6 yeah probably c5 here c5 is the, the the move that should be played but even after knight to c6 he probably wanted to use it as a surprise uh, it just uh, really went south really quickly and then a lot of bishop moves like bishop back and forth and already already at, at this point after g4 is played the engine says white is sort of winning if um, uh, even even if black defends properly so it's a difficult position difficult system to play that uh, Ma maxim tried to maybe surprise magnus a little bit but it didn't work out very well yeah, brilliant, brilliant game by Wesley. Uh, Magnus was able to bounce back in round six, uh, but um, yeah, Wesley just uh, Wesley just dominating dominating the event. Uh, so yeah, that's the game, or rather, those are the games. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to uh, thank David Gasparian, Nathan, I love you, Dad, Milos Knezovic, Streets for Medo, and David Kimura for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.